for a double bonds to be conjugated, they need to be no more than one single bond apart. In a conjugated system, pi electrons are no longer associated with specific bonds. They're delocalized in overlapping p orbitals over all atoms in the conjugated system. Each of the carbon atoms in this chain are sp2 hybridized. Therefore, they all have one of these unchanged p orbitals on them. So if you draw all those in, you get this scenario here. And I've highlighted in red where the double bonds are according to this diagram here. But then I talked about the fact that this p orbital here, which corresponds to the p orbital on this carbon, has equal opportunity to overlap with this orbital as it does with this. So the system is not as simple as a series of isolated double bonds because what you get is equal overlap of the electron density in all of these orbitals. So you can actually say that a conjugated pi system can be considered as one pi system in which there's orbital overlap all the way through. Okay, so every carbon is sp2 hybridized, therefore each carbon has a p orbital allowing for electronic interaction across the whole system. We compare that to a pair of double bonds that aren't conjugated, they have this sp3 hybridized carbon between them, and we can see that these two orbitals can overlap in a conventional double bond, as can these, but these two are too far away from each other to have this sideways overlap. So you don't extend this conjugated pi system through this chain because there's a sp3 hybridized carbon atom in the way. So that's why this is a very specific system. So if you see this motif, these carbons, uh, these double bonds are conjugated. And the key point is that conjugation and the delocalization of the electrons within this system increases the thermodynamic stability. And it's a really a uh, key concept to keep hold of the concept of conjugation. And then just to build on that even a little bit more, we went on to think about aromaticity. And I said that some cyclic molecules that contain conjugated double bonds have been found to be unusually stable compared to the other conjugated alkene systems. And this class of stabilized cyclic molecules are known as the arenes or more commonly aromatic compounds. So there are some cyclic um, conjugated systems like this one that are even more stable than you would expect for a series of conjugated double bonds. So the prototypical example is benzene here which is found to be more stable than the hypothetical 135 cyclohexatriene by quite a lot by 152 kilojoules per mole so the stability that it was calculated this molecule would benefit from by having these three double bonds conjugated doesn't is actually uh, not enough compared to what we actually see for this molecule there's an extra element of stability to this uh, and experiments have found the bond lengths for each of the six bonds in this ring are some way between a carbon carbon single bond and a carbon carbon double bond and all the bond lengths are exactly the same so we need to explain why this is the case and it's aromaticity that explains this. These bonds are shared evenly over all six atoms in this ring in a circular pi system. And when you have a very specific set of elements, you get aromaticity. The molecule has to be cyclic, like this. It has to have a number of pi electrons that fit Huckel's rule. You remember I said that in each double bond there's two pi electrons, so for this system there's one, two, three double bonds, therefore six pi electrons. And this does fit Huckel's rule, because six minus two gives us four, and therefore, and four is obviously divisible by four, so therefore n is one. So six is a number that fits Huckel's rule. This molecule has been proven to show unusual thermodynamic stability, it's completely planar, and it has a fully conjugated pi system. So these are the rules that you need to be aware of that you can apply to a molecule to see if they're aromatic or not.